Splendid Shell Sea from Paper Octeo Studio, sharing another Nano Jamo page today with you. This is for the month long challenge of art journaling every day that was started by Don Skokel. And some friends of mine from the Craft Shack design team and I decided to challenge each other to keep up with it. Please go and watch their videos, they're linked with mine. They are all awesome, and everyone is still doing something every day, pretty much, and they're all really great, so be sure to watch them and give them some love. So the theme today is bubbles, and the first thing that I thought of when I thought of bubbles is bubble baths. I love to take bubble baths. I have this uh, stuff that's from Bath & Body Works that's the scent of warm vanilla sugar, and I absolutely love to just lay in the tub and chill and and relax. I, I wish I was doing that right now, <laughs> but instead I'm doing this. So what I'm doing is I'm making a bathroom. I started out with a horizontal and a vertical line, and then I drew in some checks, and that's to give the idea that it's a floor and a couple walls. I absolutely love this print, and I wanted to retain as much of it as I could. I didn't want to cover it all up. It has hearts on it. It's really cool. It's it's from a roller stamp that went over my jelly plate when I made it and I just I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And so it's going to be the wallpaper in my really cool kind of old-fashioned checkered tile floor bathroom. And <coughs> excuse me, sorry. And so that's what I'm doing. After I dry this, I'm going to bring my Posca pen in and draw over the lines. You saw that I was coloring with my Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons there, and I just did kind of a sloppy job. But once I put these lines over it, it's going to look like everything is clear and clean and concise. So that's a um, something to do if you want to like clean up your drawing after the fact. You can always go over it with black lines. makes a huge difference. And then next I'm going to be drawing my clawfoot tub and my girl relaxing in the bubbles. And so you will see that in a moment. So I need to make sure that my tub is is proportionate. So I'm kind of figuring out where my lines are on the page and putting those lines back in so that I can have an idea of of how big the tub should be. It's obviously going to be going off the page, but at least it it doesn't look ridiculously large in this space. And I'm trying to draw those lines straight. It's not as easy as you think to draw a straight line. <laughs> And then I've got my little feet, and I'm trying to remember what claw feet look like. And I change it a few times, and I, I finally decide that I, I want it to be front facing, and I end up with like a five petaled flower on each end, which I think is very ornate. And I'm not sure any of them actually look like that, but that was how I did it. Now I'm drawing my girl, and there's her face. She's She's lying back against the slanted back of the tub. She's relaxing. She's got her eyes closed. She's about asleep. She's very relaxed. It's nice. I'm drawing with a soft graphite in my mechanical pencil, and I've got my kneaded eraser that you see me bringing in a lot. I erase a lot. Now she needs some hair. Her hair is hanging off the back of the tub. Although some of it's in the water, so she is going to have to blow dry. And then I draw her hand. Um, I end up getting it a little bit weird. I, I put the hand with the thumb on the wrong side. And then I, then I look at my hand and I say, that's not right. I have to adjust it. <laughs> Her hand wouldn't be turned facing up, it would be turned facing down, flopped over on the side of the tub there. You have to think about those things sometimes. 
Alright, out come the Neo colors again. I'm going to color her in. And something that you can't see is my palette because of that shameful shadow that's right there. Sorry about that. And the palette has just plain white heavy body acrylic, Liquitex, basics acrylic, and then I've put some squirts of water in it and it's and made it very watery. And I use that to blend my Neocolor crayons because they are watercolors. <laughs> Did you just see me do look at my hand there for a second? <laughs> yeah, that's when I figured out the hand was wrong. Anyway, so I blend my Neo colors with acrylic, and the reason that I do that is because they are watercolors, and so were they to get wet after this page is done, they could smear and run and move around. And so I like to blend with acrylic, which gives an additional plasticky um, stuff in there with it that makes it more permanent. So that's the reason I do it. Also though, it does give me added control of the color. I can make it lighter. can't make it darker with white, but I can make it lighter and um, more tent-like and add highlights. So it's a pretty good way to work with your Neo Colors. Now I'm going to color her hair, uh, making it purple. <laughs> uh, I have a purple streak in my hair and I really love my purple streak. My entire hair is not purple though because that would be a lot of upkeep and a lot of recoloring. Purple fades pretty fast in hair dye. so I just have my streak. I put some more bubbles behind her there. Now I'm coming in with shadows and that's my ochre crayon. Add some nice shadows to Caucasian skin. More blending. More colors, more shades. So I'm coloring in her hair and adding a little bit of darkness now. This is a dark magenta color. It kind of looks purple, but it's not. It's it's magenta. But it does add some extra shadows to her hair. And I'm getting out some more crayons. The reason that I'm getting out more crayons is because I need other colors that didn't come in that set of 30 that I ordered from Amazon. The colors that I got out are dark ochre and um, terracotta. And I can't remember what that third one is. But if you really need to know, I'll be glad to tell you. Just leave me a comment and I'll give you the exact colors and numbers and you can order them yourself if you really want to do a lot of skin tones. I'm figuring that the, the upside of her face is more light and then there's a lot more shadow on the downside. So that's what I'm doing. Her eyes are closed and she's almost asleep and so I want to I want to leave highlights on her eyelids but then um, add some shadow in the crease of her eyes and also under her neck but then that other side of her shoulder would be highlighted so I'm just these are the things I'm thinking about you might have noticed when I started to use the uh, terracotta that I just scribbled it on my under paper and that way I can just pick it up like kind of like a little watercolor palette. Works pretty well. Now I'm adding in the pink on her lips. I also added pink into the bubbles and the reason I did that is because of reflection. Bubbles are iridescent. I figure she's in an entirely pink room that pink would reflect into the bubbles. And so that's the reason that I didn't put pink. They're not Mr. Bubble Bubbles, the pink ones. 
which probably aren't really pink either. They come in a pink box. I used to have those when I was a kid. Probably where I got my love of bubble baths. Okay, so I'm done uh, with my coloring for now, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So I start out by cutting the entire thing out, including the tub and everything about the tub, the feet, the whole thing. Because my plan is to put the whole thing on there. But then I change my mind, as you'll see. Looks pretty good, but it's too white. I think I want something different on the tub. So I addition a few different papers there. And I picked this really cool one. I, I don't remember who sent me this, but I really like it. And I want to make the tub that color. So now I'm just uh, trying to figure out how I can do that. I cut the girl out. And... I think okay that's gonna work so I glue this on the back just lightly so that it'll stay while I'm using it as a pattern and I'm just gonna ignore all those little bumps and just make just the tub shape and glue her over the top but then I realize that the tub needs to come up in the back further underneath her hair where I cut that little piece out there was a part of the back of the tub and so I cut it out again still not working now she's sitting too far in the tub what the heck <laughs> so I take that little piece that I cut out and I cut it out of a scrap and then I figure I can just put it back in there so I put a piece of the scrap paper just right on the back to hold it and then I glue in that little blue piece and then I put her back on the tub and now it looks as if she's got that back part of the tub right there for her. So that's how I did it. Seems a little bit fussy but it worked. So I'm gluing on my pieces with tacky glue today. I was just too tired to get out matte medium and worry about uh, the colors moving when I put it over the top and the whole thing. I just went with just your plain old tacky glue. I might uh, seal it with a sealer later, but today I was just too tired. <laughs> now I need the claw foot and I have a little piece that I cut out if you make a drawing and you cut it apart, you can use all the little pieces as a pattern. Just make sure that you put them in the right direction so that your upside and downside make sense. Once you do that wrong, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> oh, it's backwards. Okay, so this is a scrap of silver cardstock. I figure that part would be silver. Now I'm getting out my archival ink and a little stamp from Stampin' Up. It's like little swirlies and dots. I think it kind of looks like the bubbles are rising into the air and just adds more interest to the background. I didn't want to do anything major to the background because I really like it. So I wanted to keep it fairly intact. Now I've got a Prisma color pen, ink pen, um, it's an 05 because I needed something smaller to do the details of her face which is what I thought I was going to do with that pen but then I ended up doing a bunch of other stuff with it that I could have used my Posca. The Posca pen would be, even the fine tip would be too wide for this. This is a, her face is very small and um, adding detail into it is a little bit tricky when you're doing something that tiny. So I'm just, you know, drawing, drawing in details. I sped it up for you because you've seen that before. Going around a few of the bubbles, not every single one, but um, quite a few to give them more definition. And around her hand, I fixed her hand. It's, I cut the thumb off so that it no longer looks like her thumb is facing in the wrong direction. around the edges of the tub. 
Oh, and now I've got my Posca. I'm going to go around the edges of the tub, give him a little bit heavier line. I'm writing the word dream because she's just, you know, in la-la land, relaxed and dreaming about things. And then I decide I need more in the scene. So I'm making a little bubbles bottle. And it's the industrial size bubbles. This We're not messing around. This is a big bottle of bubbles because she's going to be taking a lot of bubble baths. She needs a lot of relaxation. So she's got the big bottle. Uh, this is a glossy cardstock that I believe was stained with leftover Easter egg dye. Pretty sure that's where it came from, it's a little scrap. You know, you can't waste even Easter egg dye. Now I'm making some towels because eventually she is going to have to get out. So, you know, she's going to need something to dry off with. I could have done a lot more detail. I could have put a window with a windowsill with candles and maybe a little cat or a plant or something. I could have uh, hung a robe on the wall there behind her. I didn't. I was just, I was tired and I just decided this was good enough. I did leave a blank space over the top which I ended up putting a heart cut out of that same paper and I believe that happened off camera after I'd already turned it off. Alright, now I'm looking for my dang paintbrush. I'm looking for it. Where is it? Can't find it, so I ended up getting a different one. I know it looks about the same, but it is different. And I'm adding splatters with acrylic paint. The reason that I use this small brush rather than my usual fan brush is because the fan brush makes very fine spatter, and I wanted it to be more chunky, have a little bit more definition. Now I'm going with my white Posca over the word, and then I'll end up going back in with black again and redefining it. And now the famous Stabilo All pencil. Yes, yes. That's my black Stabilo All. It is a very soft, very water soluble um, uh, pigment in it. And it, when it's dry, it's permanent. It doesn't move after that. So it's, it's watercolor that turns permanent, kind of like ink tints blocks do. And I really, I, what this does is it makes the thing that you've glued on appear as if it's part of the picture. By adding a little bit of shadow around it, it blends it in. It's still standing out as the focal point, but it's blending in to the background. And I just, I love this. You've seen me do this a million times, and you'll see me do it a million times more if you continue watching my videos. I also go in with some of that diluted black, and I put it in the bubbles too, because that adds more dimension. Do you see what a difference that makes? It just makes a huge difference. Then now I'm just doing my last little bit of fussing. I put some blue and I'm scribbling it on my under paper and then using that as a palette. A little bit of white, just to add a little bit more dimension to those two, two elements that I added. And one more time, some white on top of her hair to give a real highlight to the top of it. And then I'm going around the word again all the way around it with black to make it stand out. I think I'm about done. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more fussing. And there you have it. Uh, this is my little close-up video. You can see the heart that I added with that same scrap of paper and all the little details up close and personal. Please like, subscribe, comment, share so that I know that you like my videos. Thanks. Bye-bye.